Obviously, um, we still, the theme of this team at this particular day, that we're still a work in progress. Um, we, are, uh, t we are playing different combinations. Um, I think that we are shown that we can be uh, very efficient at times, but we can also, it's obvious that uh, we're not quite all in sync. Um, even though um, we are, have periods where we look very efficient offensively, we have periods where we're not recognizing uh, the, the proper approach to the game. Um, sometimes we, we have our kids kind of on an 80, what we call an 80-20 rule, that 20% of the time, regardless of what we're doing, I give them freedom you know, to be aggressive regardless of what we're doing. Well, but, and then, but most of the time when it's a five on five situation, when you get the ball and you're pushing down, it's five on five, 80% of the time, you need to move the ball and move your bodies to get the highest percentage shot. But right now we have the 80 percentage, the 80, 20 uh, percentage backwards. You know, we, we are, we are, aggressive when there's five on five and then uh, too patient when we have uh, opportunities to, to, to be a, a, to attack the defense. I, I think we've worked on that this week. I think we, we pointed some of those things out to, to them. Um, we have guys that are changing roles uh, that cycle out mentally and emotionally that's an adjustment. We have new guys that are adjusting to the system offensively and defensively that uh, still are a work in progress. We just feel very fortunate that we have won some, some, some games against some ex extremely competitive teams. And um, uh, we, we seem to be making progress with these days. Early on, we didn't shoot the ball well. I think you sh we showed that if, if we, if we move the ball and, and, and uh, have time and space, I think we showed that we're a pretty good shooting team. Early on, you can see that we wasn't shooting free throws very well. A lot of that's mental. I think when you have, you know, when you um, change your role and when you come into a new situation, sometimes it's, it's as much mental uh, as anything. You gotta go to the free throw line and hopefully be a little more relaxed and confident. Uh, those things that you normally work through when you have exhibition games and maybe a couple games where you can get everybody on the floor. Right now, we haven't had any of those. So what we're doing now is just trying to learn on the fly and hope we feel very fortunate that we are undefeated at this particular point when we're still trying to find ourselves. Chris Nee. Coach, Anthony Polite seemingly has developed into a really reliable 3 and D guy on both ends of the court, especially on the defensive end. I know that's a natural part of the maturation for him and taking the time learning the system, but how has he elevated his game from last year to now and become such a dependable piece for you guys as you are transitioning? Well, Anthony has always been <clears throat> uh, 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 one of our better defenders. Um, he went through a freshman year of a lot of nagging injuries uh, that I thought that didn't allow him to, uh, you know, to, to progress. But I, I thought that was a good year for him. Now you see him confident, efficient. Uh, he very seldom makes any in the middle of errors. Uh, he's vocal, uh, helping some of the uh, less experienced players uh, understand what it's like to participate in our system. Um, he feels that if he gets an open look, he's knocking it down. Um, but also, you know, he, he still uh, has other areas of his game that we like to see him continue to improve on. He could be, he's a very good a driver, a great decision maker. Um, and uh, he's really, really stepping it up with his vocal leadership. And uh, he's playing with an extreme amount of confidence now. Our players uh, are learning more how we can utilize each other. And there's no doubt that if you want to get an assist, uh, you move the ball around and give, uh, 
get the ball to Anthony and open look and you know maybe you can get your assist in the book. <laughs> the follow up, Chris. Well, I was just going to ask UCF. They haven't played. I think it will be roughly 14, 15 days when they face you guys. Is that a positive for a team early in the season, or is it a negative because you kind of you just you know you, you get in a rhythm with playing games at some point too? Well, my, I, I do think that it depends on where you are in terms of your maturity level of your team and the experience that you have returning. I actually think <laughs> that's good to have practices where you can teach through repetition and do the same things over and over and over where now the things that you're trying to ingrain in your players become habit. Uh, basketball is a game of reaction. You got 0.5 seconds to make a decision and you have to be able to see the whole floor um, uh, at the same, all at the same time. I always tell our guys, your eyes got to be like a camera where you're seeing all over the floor, you know, I'm, I'm seeing, I'm looking at Chuck and I'm looking at Chris Knee all at the same time. So I have to see Chuck with, with his red outfit and I got to see Chris with his glasses while, you know, while I'm, I'm, I'm looking at, at, at our, you know, so you got to be able to see that. So even though I'm looking over here at, at Chris, I got to anticipate a down screen over the side over here and the guy who's supposed to be rotating into the lane. So instead of throwing the ball to Chris, I'm throwing the ball to the post who's rolling to the basket. Well, it takes a while to be able to adjust that. Sometimes when you're in high school or you're in junior college, you know, you focus on your best player on the team. So your primary responsibility is to score and for your team to be successful. But at this level, the way we play, uh, we, we got to be able to um, uh, see everybody at the same time and, and to be able to anticipate. So in order to be able to do that, you got to have repetitions over and over and over. So when you don't have games, you spend more time teaching. When you do have games, sometimes the, you know you you gain that confidence by having success, or or you use it as a teaching moment when you're not as successful. So you know it depends on where you are and what your team needs. Thank you, Leonard. Lane Hurt, Coach. When you are in the stage of the season when you're still kind of building and growing and figuring things out, when you get wins and sort of the conferences like the Big Ten, the SEC, the ACC, does that help mentally for this team? And does it help reinforce the things that, that you have been working on? Well, I think what it has done for us specifically, as opposed to trying to do some philosophical answer for you, we specifically can go back and watch it on film and point out the, 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 the pluses and the minuses. And, and, and it's easier for them to see um, exactly what they should and shouldn't, what they sh what they're doing well, and what, what what the areas of the game they need to improve on. So you, and 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 the fact that you play against good competition, whether it represents mentally, you know, uh, uh, make a, a little bit more of a teaching point when you uh, are able to point things out uh, that um, uh, that you are doing against a real good team. Um, the other night against Georgia Tech. I felt we won the game, but it was, I don't think it was because we executed very well. I, I think that we won the game because we made really good plays. At times, we had some we 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 made good plays. Well, um, you, you you won't have the luxury, you know, of letting somebody go on, on a, a 15 0 run. We had four possessions where we were aggressive on one or two passes and we could have moved the ball and had higher percentage shots. Uh, you know, and doing that particular run, uh, they hit a couple of threes and um, it, it, the ball didn't bounce our way. And that's the nature of the game. So when you, when you, when you get to a point where you up like that, then the other team becomes more aggressive. So you have to utilize their aggressiveness to your favor by moving the ball, making extra pass. And then obviously when you're trying to come from behind, um, Sometimes fatigue sets in, and when you're efficient, you make them work a little bit more and uh, and hopefully attack inside and get to the foul line. All that becomes a, a factor, and we didn't do that the other night. Uh, as a coach, I got I to gotta utilize those moments as teaching moments as well. And so you, you always can teach better <laughs> from a 
a, a, a victory than you can from a loss. Follow up for you, Lane. Okay, next go to Antoine from the Democrat. Hey, Coach. Uh, just talk about what you want to see from uh, these last two non-conference games, and also, uh, is it? I know you talked about how uh, you're not where you want to be, but is it just trial by fire at this point, and just feel you feel like it's going to get better over time with the uh, lack of games that you played? There's no doubt that we we need to be more efficient. We need we need to do a better job rebound, being consistent with our blockout. But more than anything else, we just need to learn about how we can play together with each other. We don't have kids playing selfish. We're just still learning uh, how to recognize the strengths and weaknesses of, of your teammates. It, it's going, the next couple of games will be probably a lot more about us and how focused we are on just getting better in those areas that we know that we're going to, have to be much more efficient at as we move into conference play. We have to utilize these two games as an opportunity for us to become a well-oiled machine within ourselves. Um, I thought we had a good day. Uh, gosh, we had about an hour, hour 15, maybe 20 minute film session yesterday, just going over all the things and debriefing from the Georgia Tech game. And then, um, moving into the uh, Central Florida game. Um, I didn't realize, but we went, we went, I know at least an hour and 20 minutes and that's an awful lot, but that's what, what it need. what this team needs, you know, um, mentally, emotionally to, to, to be, play with more confidence. Um, hopefully with each, each game, I, I think that we, we've learned something from each game, uh, but we're at a point now where we don't have a whole lot of more, um, games to get ready for our conference. Uh, obviously, we're happy that we was able to get the, the one ACC victory on them, but you know, we, we can't get too far ahead of ourselves. So this has to be a, a, a game that we're going into now, really, really focused on trying to be more efficient while we still have the freedom to, 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 to take advantage of uh, the individual skills. And sometimes that's a, that's a, a balancing act, you know, where guys who are whose roles have changed. And so now they are expected to do things a little differently than they were when they, their roles were different. And then you have new players that are trying to adjust to the tempo, the intensity and, and, and the execution part of now, instead of being quote, the man, you, you one of the guys. And sometimes that's a mindset that, that, that they have to adjust to as well. A follow up Antoine. Yeah, I um I have another question. It's kind of unrelated to that. Uh, it's in regards to um, after the Gardner Webb game, you have a little bit of a break uh, between you with know, the Christmas holiday. Uh, what is the plan for the team? Are you allowing players to go home, or are they going to just stay around campus? Well, you know, this is that's um a kind of a moving target. Um, most guys have had. Um, situations come about as a result of youngsters not staying in the bubble. So, you know, this is a different year, different circumstances we're operating under. We all have to make sacrifices uh, because of the pandemic that we're dealing with. And so we'll, we'll make decisions based on, on what we think is best. Uh, uh, we, as the ACC coaches, we met and we talked about you know, what was best. We think psychologically, emotionally, it's best for the guys to have a break. But uh, if you notice, there's about 17 games. We have probably about 25 games in the last two days that have been either postponed or canceled uh, as a result of, of people kind of getting out of their routine. Uh, I'm talking to some of my friends on the coaching side, they've had People coming from to the football games from uh, out of area that have unfortunately visited with other people who coming from other places and who have been associated with the players and it's been a, a kind of a moving target. Every every um, scenario you can think of has happened 
with everybody trying to stay safe and healthy. So what we'll do will be direct in relation to what we think is best. Uh, uh, a lot of the, most of the coaches, uh, the schools, are, the players are not going home. Uh, so, you know, we, 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 we kind of lean toward staying in our bubble uh, and trying to stay healthy and safe <clears throat> and not allow ourselves to get caught up with some of the misfortune things that have happened for some of the other people. You know, I've talked to a lot of coaches who, who have said, boy, I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I hadn't made that mistake. And you have people coming from out of town on planes and on rental cars and staying in different hotels that are unfortunately um, want to spend time with their youngsters like we have always been able to do. Well, this is a new day and time. And uh, when you have 3,600 people that lost their lives yesterday, um, it, it puts a coach in my position who's responsible for everybody in our program. It, it gets definitely gets my attention. Go to Ira. Hey, Coach, uh, Tenor uh, really seemed to be effective at both ends of the floor against Florida. Is that what you were expecting out of him this season? And, and how much more comfortable is he now that he's had some time with the, the program? You, you know, Iris, it's a good question. And, and, and what I'm going to say about Tenor probably will, will also relate to the other players. Uh, he's played uh, at a – a school where the competition has not been nearly as challenging for him uh, as what he has in practice every day. I mean, can, I mean, he now you seven two and you get the ball inside and you just just turn around and put it in the basket. Well, that doesn't happen when you have another two other seven footers pushing you and uh, going at you and challenging your shots. Everything that Tanoa is doing is new to him the tempo, the pace, the physicality, all the different um, schemes, offensively and defensively. Um, and plus you gotta do it at a pace uh, that, that's, that gives you a chance to be successful at this level. So, so it's a huge, huge adjustment for him. And uh, the pace and just the physicality. Um, when you're able to turn around and be seven two and put the ball on the glass, but you now you have to jump. Now you you gotta you gotta you gotta you gotta be strong and physical and aggressive. And uh, sometimes those things have become habit for me. So if you've played a couple of years at a level where you had success not doing that, you know you get into you, you don't want to say they are bad habits, but they 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 are put them in positions where obviously. Uh, this is a little bit more challenging. So I expect him to get better and better as, as, as we go through the season. Uh, he is not where I think he would like to be and where we need for him to be in order for us to be successful. Um, he's a great kid. He's has, has a hard worker, but um, he's going through a learning phase now. And it's as much to do with the mindset as it is in addition to <laughs> learn a new scheme and and as and as a, a writer or a reporter you know you see a guy who has played ball and you see his skills but psychologically the, the mental adjustment that he's having to make is tremendous for him just like a lot of the other players as well you know scotty Barnes goes from being a power forward to a point guard well you, you see his talent you see him making plays but can you imagine now he's coming down the court he got to worry about four of the guys. Where are they? And and, and, and you know, what what did the coach say? You know, as opposed to being a, a physical rebounding tough defender and put back guy, now all of a sudden he has all these other elements that's part of the thought process. And, and you can say the same thing for Quincy as well as 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 uh, Sadar. These guys are going through a really really intense mentally and emotionally development. And I watch them in practice and. Mm, Oops, my mistake, my bad. But that's because they're going through this development. And that's what makes us 
you know, makes the coach anxious. I see the potential and I see the effort. I got to be extremely patient with a guy like Tenor because he's going through a, a tremendous transition right now. Uh, Bob Ferrante from the Osceola. Hey, Coach. Um, curious if you know the, the next ACC commissioner is Jim Phillips. Um, curious if you know him, have talked to any folks about him, and, and um, also curious, you know, what, what you want from an ACC commissioner as a coach at Florida State. What's, what's important to you? <laughs> uh, Chief, um, I got all I can say, Grace Oak. Uh, trying to coach my team and <laughs> making sure everybody go to class, make sure that we conduct ourselves and we stay safe. Uh, I, I'm, I'm familiar with what I've read about him in the paper. Uh, I, I don't know him personally. I'm going to trust that the, the powers that be have, have gone through the process of vetting the guys who uh, they think is qualified to be the ACC commissioner. Um, I'm sure that I get to know him at some point, uh, but during this period right now, Chief, I'm being honest with you. Um, I'm sure I get to know him, but I, 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 what I've read about him is extremely impressive, uh, uh, and uh, look like he's more than qualified. Uh, I'm sure that I'll be able to answer those questions for you a little better a little later on. Uh, uh, there's no doubt he has some big shoes to fill. I think. Uh, our commissioner has been um, forward thinking. He's been creative. He's been innovative. Uh, he's uh, he's um, he's he has been able to make thoughtful decisions that I think has the ACC conference um, at the top level. Uh, the way he's orchestrated through the addition. Of, the, the football powers, Florida State, Miami, Notre Dame, uh, Syracuse, Boston College, Louisville, uh, bringing those guys into the league. Uh, whenever there seemed to be an issue, he seemed to have always operated with a level head. So when you ask me what I expect, I expect a guy to come in and pick up where uh, Swafford left off and keep us moving in the right direction. Because we're one of the. You want the next question? Yeah, I got we're one of the better um, um, conferences, I think, in America. Go to Ryan Kelly from WCTV. Hey, coach, just wanted to ask when you flip open the scouting report, what really jumps off the page about UCF? Well, they're a team that. You, you don't have an opportunity to know quite as much about because they've had so many of their games canceled. You, you watch the Auburn game, you know, and you watch them be very, very efficient. You, 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 you watch the Michigan game, and Michigan kind of overpowered them there in the latter stages of the game. It was a close game there for a while. So we know less about them than we probably would <clears throat> some of the other teams. They have a lot of transfers, a lot of new guys in. So, it, Ryan, it's going to be a lot about us, as much about us as it's going to be about them. Um, they're probably going to know a little more about us than we know about them. Uh, we looked at a lot of their films from last year. Uh, we watched a couple of games that they, they have played this year. If they're like us, they still are, are coming together, growing and developing as a team. Uh, so, we, we like to think that our defensive schemes and what they are, we don't change very much uh, about how we play offensively. They're going to mix it up. They're going to play a little zone. They're going to play a little man. We have schemes where we utilize uh, uh, against uh, those types of systems. Um, so I, I realize that we need to be prepared to make the adjustments that are necessary. Hopefully this will be a good game for us. The fact that we don't know quite as much about them we haven't had as much opportunity to evaluate them, uh, probably would give us a unique opportunity like we in a conference game. I mean, like we in a tournament game where we, we, we have we have uh, short turnarounds and not very much information. So then it becomes more about your execution and hopefully that will be who we, uh, that's what we're going to be focused on moving into this game. Go to Mike Monaco from the ACC Network. 
Hey, Coach. Mike here calling the game tomorrow. It's, it's good to see you again, even if it's over Zoom. Um, but wanted to ask you about Scotty and his recruitment. Um, if you think back to it, do, do you remember the, the first time you saw him uh, on the floor and, and maybe what jumped out to you? Well, obviously, you know, I, I get that question asked so much by uh, people in your business. And you see so many kids over a, a number of years, <laughs> sometimes that's, uh, that's challenging. But uh, you, by coincidence, I do remember the first time I saw him. Um, and um, I saw he was playing at a high level at, at, a, at a younger age with an older group. And I saw a, 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 a youngster with a um, high motor, extremely active, um, focus on the game. Uh, and, and he, he stood out with uh, how much he loved the game and the passion that he played with was what I thought was, was more than obvious. Uh, he was still growing and developing but it didn't seem, he seemed to be a positionless kind of guy, a guy who uh, affected the game when he wasn't scoring in terms of blocks and intensity and talking and enthusiasm. You, you knew that whatever potential he had, he was going to develop and reach it. Anybody got any more questions for Coach today? Coach, uh, Scott Snyder here. Um, just wondering, what did you say to your team or how did you handle, and I know it's a couple of days ago, the Keontae Johnson unfortunate incident. What did you talk to about your team? What did they ask you? How did you handle it? Well, during the moment, um, being that, in all my coaching career, I've had very few situations developed during the game that serious. I mean, I've had kids turn ankles and maybe kids fall and hit, bump their head on the floor. And I've had kids get concussions. And, you know, you, you, you have moments where you're concerned and hopeful that they're, you know, that they're, they're safe. I, I didn't, in, in most of the time when you, in life, you kind of, go back to your experiences to make decisions and your feelings are a result of of of, <clears throat> of uh, how you held things in the past. Well, I didn't see him fall. So I, 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 I couldn't tell whether he was unconscious or, or conscious, but I saw the sense of urgency that the trainers and the you know, administration was, was, was hustling and but our players who saw it were extremely emotional and almost out of control emotional, emotionally. And I, as immediately I said, fellas, there's not a whole lot we can do about this right now other than we, we need to pray for this young man that he's health. And the response I got was I had guys just jump down on their knees and start crying and praying immediately. That was a, a very emotional moment. And I, as, as a coach, I'm trying to maintain my composure so that, you know, not knowing, not, 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 not uh, grasping whether or not is this game going to be played? Is this serious? Is, you know, what's going on here? Uh, so, and then once uh, it became obvious that, that we were going to continue to play, when the referees told me that they wanted to continue to play, um, I still had guys that were extremely emotional to the fact, well, I, I, one of the coaches mentioned to me that he didn't think one, one of our players would be able to, to play for the remainder of the half. And, but while we were playing, I'm trying to stay focused on the game and, and, and uh, because that was the responsibility we had at the time. And um, at halftime, obviously, we didn't, we didn't know exactly 
what was getting what was going to transpire when I, when the uh, administration came in and said that uh, that was some question about whether or not the game would resume. And they wanted to know my thoughts, wanted to know my thoughts. And I said that we would, I thought we, we need to make decisions based on exactly what they thought it was important for them uh, and, and, and it wasn't in the best interest of their team, not knowing the severity of what actually was going on with, with him as a player. I just knew that, you know, I knew our guys were emotional. Um, and uh, I can imagine what was going on in, in in their locker room, I I was prepared mentally to accept the fact that the, maybe the game would be canceled, and I was somewhat surprised when I found out that their players, in the honor of uh, of their teammate, wanted to continue playing because they said that that's what he would want them to do. That, that was the, inf <clears throat> the the information that I got. So it was a very different um, moment in time. Then later on, I found that I had several players that had been in those situations where the outcome was not very good. For one, one particular, and several other guys that had some unfortunate things happen uh, in 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 their experiences that really affected them. And so we've we've had to have some counseling uh, with some of our players, and we've tried to handle it uh, the best way we could. And I, I don't know where we are. I, I do believe that it seems as though we're recovering a little bit. I think a lot has to do with us getting the positive feedback from where he is and seems as though he's 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 doing okay. So I think our guys are a little less challenged right now mentally and emotionally <clears throat> because of what appears to be the progress that, that we hear coming out of Gainesville. All righty, any more questions for Coach this morning? Mike Jaminski, welcome aboard. Hey, Chuck, how are you? Leonard, good morning. Hello, um, Michael. Hey, how are you, man? I'll see you on Monday. Well, <laughs> yeah, hopefully. Uh, hopefully. Well, Mike, uh, tell us about uh, the NCAA tournament game in uh, St. Louis uh, in 78. Uh, what, what was your thoughts about the game? Uh, I don't have any recollection of that, Coach. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Although I, I, w I would like to talk to you about some of the recruitment of those players. And if, uh, <laughs> yeah. see, you know, have, have you, have you talked to Jack Givens lately? I have not, you know, I used to see him every, uh, every year. Cause when he was with the Orlando magic doing their TV and, you know, I'd see him and, uh, y'all discuss, uh, discuss that bank shot he made from the deep corner to hit off the boards. <laughs> yeah. Two of the four to one points that he 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 gave you. I just wanted to jot up talk about that. If yeah, if, if if he had called it, I'd really be impressed. But uh, <laughs> I got to tell you, a few years ago when I was with CBS, I was it was doing a game um, in uh, in St. Louis. The first time I'd been back there since '78, and I'm walking in, and who's the first guy I run into? But Kyle Macy, who's doing he's doing the game for Westwood One Radio. And I'm like, I can't get away from you, son of a. <laughs> <laughs> um, I just, just from a, a logistics standpoint, uh, one, how is your team mentally doing in the bubble and, um, you know, have, living life as you have to right now? And then also for you and your coaches, what kind of challenge has it been in communication in game with you guys separated instead of right next to one another? Mike, I have I have what I think is the best uh, uh, staff in the whole country. I got Stan's been with me 25 years. I recruited Charlton Young out of high school. That that, that tells you how old I am. Steve Smith, <laughs> Steve Smith's uh, one of the brightest basketball minds, uh, young basketball minds, uh, military guy very bright, very intelligent. These guys make make my job really easy. Mike Bradley, who's been with me now close to 20 years, my weight training conditioning coach. You know, those guys, obviously with Chuck and, and uh, my, my my ops guy was a graduate assistant in my program. My, my um, 
a film guy was a graduate assistant in my program. So I'm surrounded with quality people who understand our system, who's embedded in the, the, our philosophy and our culture. And so it's almost like sometimes we all on the same page thinking and communicating. And so we, 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 we're, it, we've had a seamless transition to, to that. And, you know, once you have a system, offensively and defensively, you know, we're coaching our system as much as anything. So it, it, we, we, we practice it, we talk it, we speak it. We have terminologies that, that relate to it. Sometimes when you have new players and going through the transition that we're going through. So, so basically, you know, we make the adjustments that are necessary uh, in relation to the different teams that we're playing. But what we, we kind of, we believe in our system, we believe in each other and we hold each other accountable. And, and, and I, I think that's one reason why we probably, you know, as efficient as we have, we, we've been on a pretty good run. We've only lost three games at home, what, in four years. Um, you know, we won, what, 10 straight overtime games. It's not all because of Leonard Hamilton, it's because of our style, I mean, our staff, our system, and the belief in our, in our culture that, that allows us to stay focused and, and to, uh, to be as successful as we have been. Uh, we don't take that for granted. And we communicate. And as a staff, we probably, we probably communicate more now that we're not always in the office all the time than we did when we were in the office, you know? Uh, you know, we, we, uh, we're, we're in a pretty good place as a staff and uh, we, we just gotta not take it for granted and keep, cause in our conference, you know what it's like. If you're not mentally ready <laughs> every night, well, 70% of all the games are decided by four points or less. I think they say, and the other 30 are decided by six or seven points or less. So this is a, uh, regardless of where you are in the conference, you gotta be focused. And I think we understand that. And I think we we all connected at the hip. So I think we're in a good place. Well, yeah, I'll tell you what, if you ever hire Jack Givens as an assistant, I'll never do another game down there. <laughs> uh, well, yeah. So if I know you coming next time, maybe we invite him, you know, <laughs> sit on the bench. <laughs> All right, fellas, if nothing else, you guys have a wonderful day. Thanks, Leonard.